to understand a bit better where we are heading as a race and as a planet. We have to understand where we're coming from. In the words of George Orwell, as he wrote in 1984, those who control the past control the future, and those who control the present control the past. So if we look at how we are now as complete beings, you could say we are made up out of three parts. One part of us is, you could say, really earthly. Um, it contains the energies of the place where we are born, of our ancestors, of our bloodlines, our instincts. Um, so this is one third. The other third is our spirit, which for most of us is Atlantean in nature and is now here to continue its process of development, of its process of growth. The other third is the higher influences, the gods, the goddesses, uh, angels, ascended masters, egregores, and our connection with them. So each three of these parts can guide us, and it's actually a combination of all these three influences together, which usually decides our course. Let's focus a little bit on the first part, because this is actually the most significant part at the moment, given our current state of being here on the planet. So humans are social animals, and we are not merely social animals, but we're also competitive social animals. So our natural organization is in competitive tribes. So within the tribe people work together and amongst tribes we compete. And we see the same principle in a way in chimpanzees, but also in our own instincts. We have a great fear of not being belonging to the group, of being an outcast, of not conforming to other people's needs, desires, social standards. We have a very strong need for acceptance. But on the other hand, we are very capable of uh, judging outsiders. Um, look at how we are intolerant with regards to religion or uh, sexuality, for instance, or even of people of a different social caste, racism. And this, you could say, ingrained patterns, they also are the basis of our society, because instead of having a small tribe, we now have nations competing with each other, we have sport clubs competing with each other, we have businesses competing with each other. It's all the repetition of the same instinct. It is just on a slightly different in a slightly different form, but the base instinct itself has not altered really over the past millions of years. Or at least hundreds of thousands of years. So if you look at our society, you could say, like, are we living in a spiritual society? Are we living in a conscious society? No. Our society is basically being, yeah, shaped by our base instinct. And we are not really controlling these instincts at all. These instincts are controlling us. And therefore, they shape our future. If you look one step higher, slightly higher vibration, we can look at our spirit. So what we see is that there has been a change. The spirits which um, lived here for quite a while in human bodies were, you could say, very natural spirits, animalistic in nature. Uh, they saw themselves as a part of nature. Uh, they saw other beings in nature as their you know, brothers, their sisters. It was kind of an equality and there was also a give and take um, because we realized that we needed certain plants which could heal us, um, other plants which could feed us, um, animals to teach us, animals to feed us. 
and we envisioned ourselves as being part of that natural community. Um, but then Atlantean spirits started to incarnate on our planet because they had destroyed their own home. And this is in a way the pattern they are in. They are not so much interested in sharing, they are more interested in developing power and control. And humans, of course, through their development of technology, through their development of science, have been following that new pattern of, um, which came along with the new spirit type of developing power, of developing control, and also in a way seeing as ourselves as being superior or above uh, the natural order of things and wanted to control uh, nature, the world, the planet, everything around us. Well, in the past this led to the destruction of their home because, well, apparently their desire of control and their generation of power was not matched by their ability to control that power. And now we are in a way in a little bit similar condition. So you could say as a bigger part for many of the spirits who are incarnated here, it's a test. Like, okay, last time you went on this path to develop this and you destroyed yourself. Um, now again, you've continued on your path. You've not altered anything. Um, you've been given a different perspective by the other spirits living in this on this planet um, to help you to see things differently, to caution you a little bit uh, about what you're destroying, the species you're destroying, the relationship of humanity with the species which you're destroying. And let's see if you will do any different. Um, up to now I see a desire in many of the spirits to do things differently. I don't see a lot of skill in doing things differently. So most of the spirits which are now incarnating in human bodies are kind of trapped in their own habit and they're also repeating the pattern. So you could say on two levels, both the level of like repeating our history following our instinctive patterns, the patterns which are part of our bodies. That's continuing. Um, and also the pattern of the dominant, yeah, you could say the majority of the spirits of trying to gain control and power and using that power unwisely also seems to be continuing. So fortunately there is a third part which is the higher world, the higher vibrations. Um, on a larger scale, you could say these greater powers have as a purpose the development within the cosmos, within our universe. So they give us the building blocks to build energetic structures and they are trying to empower us. In working with that knowledge, working with those, uh, with those energies. And if we look here, we can see progress, fortunately. So what we can see is that we went from learning to um, master our emotions, uh, control our instincts, um, to in a way elevate ourselves uh, from our animal state. Uh, that has largely worked. We're not rid of it. We are also not completely in control of it anymore. We kind of lost a lot of those skills. We forgot them. Um, but there has been progress at least. Next stage is actually the, the introduction of the concepts of harmony, of beauty. Um, and also that has been partially successful. Um, We've created art, um, we've explored through art the, the, our ability to manifest higher powers, higher worlds, bring them into our world in the form of temples, in the form of um, sacred music, um, sacred art, uh, but also in the form of performance art. 
So we have been also making progress on that level. So third level of this teachings from the higher worlds is the development of insight in the yeah the spiritual laws, the nature of our being, understanding that we are spirits on a journey, and that we yeah are you know living on the tides of the cosmos. Well, there's been quite a lot of um, that written about it. There are also books about it. There are even modern studies about the structure of yeah the energy body of the aura of the chakras. Um, of the meridians, so the body of knowledge is yeah growing, um, but the dissemination or the realization uh, of this is not the dominant impulse in humanity. It's actually being reduced as the dominant impulse due to the advent of the more um, yeah you could say um, disruptive. Western society upon the rest of the world. Then we have the final principle, the last lesson we have been given to work with compassion, with love, with understanding, respect, um, sense of equality towards all beings. And well, if we look around us, we're still also quite a long way from that. So. We do see that on this spiritual level, humanity has been making a lot of progress, but that not every member of humanity has gone along with that progress. Many people have yeah, mastered some stages very incompletely or not at all or are not practicing it at the very least. And without applying this like secret fire uh, which we're getting from the higher world it's also very different difficult to transform our spirits and also very difficult to transform our patterns which we are receiving from our past so if you're looking at where we're going well then you could say we're a little bit stuck at the moment because you have different impulses, you could say, also coming through different types of humans. And they also have gone unba unbalanced. And because of this imbalance, it is very hard for humanity itself to take a step forward. Because just like um, if we're like walking a tightrope, it's only possible to take a step forward if you're in balance. And it's the same for an individual human, but also a little bit the same for the human race. So if we look at humanity and the different parts of humanity, how they need to cooperate, we can see four segments. So we need to realize who we are, we need to have self-awareness, self-knowledge. Um, we need to accept ourselves the way we are, have compassion with ourselves. We should control ourselves but not judge ourselves. We should work with all our ingredients. We should not repress them or deny them. And this is an amount of yeah, knowledge which is still quite difficult for many parts of humanity because they have very strong strictures, religious strictures, moral strictures cultural strictures, lots of taboos, lots of expectations, which prevent self-knowledge, self-expression. So the part of humanity which is good at this, which remembers this, has not been able to teach this to other cultures very well. Then we have the part of humanity um, which is understanding of balance of cycles of being reciprocal of cooperation um, of harmony of the significance of art we find that this part of humanity is not very supported in modern society um, because people are just thinking about effectiveness like 
okay, I can do this in a harmonious way, or I can do this in a way which will generate a bigger yield with less effort, less energy, less time, less cost, and to do it that way. So we're not choosing to do things in a harmonious way, we're choosing to do things in usually more brute force method, because it is quicker, it is easier. Um, so this, yeah, part of humanity, these humans within our society are also, you could say, underrepresented. Then we come to some stronger groups. So we have the group which carries, um, in a way, wisdom, um, tradition, um, and understanding. Um, this group is stronger, but weakening. Um, what you often see is that if there is a kind of a competition, then things tend to polarize. And these carriers and protectors of tradition, instead of building the tradition and developing the tradition which they're serving, they're now like in a way, fossilizing the tradition and the knowledge. And they no longer understand it themselves. They're just following what yeah, patterns were already laid out. So you could say that this group, while strong, is getting less healthy. Um, because the understanding of why the tradition exists, what is the purpose of tradition, how to apply the tradition, for whom it is meant, and what is it supposed to achieve, has disappeared. They are only now fighting to keep it alive with every means possible and resisting any challenge. And because of this closed-minded, hostile attitude, it becomes more and more difficult of these yeah, guardians of tradition to really serve the rest of humanity as is their purpose. So while strong they have been derailed. And then we come to the most uh, successful group in a way, maybe unfortunately, because they are successful at the expense of other groups. So these are the people who have as a job to um, to work with chaos, to upset things, to create motion, to bring new impulses, bring fire to the system. So we have a lot of new impulses, we have a lot of development, and ideally all of this development should be yeah, guided by the other three groups. So it should be a development which is helping us to express ourselves, to explore ourselves, to work with our inner being. It should be developments which aid us in working in harmony with all other beings. And it should be developments which are in concert with our knowledge and understanding of ourselves and the universe. Unfortunately, the developments which we are creating aren't. The developments we are creating are usually based on, well, ego, uh, greed, curiosity, fear. Um, they're not guided by these other groups at all. So this, you could say, group driving humanity forward has, is completely failing to listen to humanity. And it is not driving them forward, it is just getting them running around in circles. And this is the major group, so you could say, um, what is ruling humanity? Confusion. Um, humanity has gone into a manic phase of being yeah, unguided projectiles, just bouncing off the walls. So this is the current state of humanity and it will only be balanced if those other parts of humanity, the other voices within humanity, can be yeah, given their due influence again when this fiery, um, chaotic group uh, will relinquish control and that there will be, you could say, a cool down in yeah, um, the fire of growth, of change, of uh, uh, greed. <laughs> 
Um, but this is a difficult thing because we as humans, our spirits, are in a state of curiosity. This is the normal and also healthy state, healthy state of a human being. And out of this curiosity, of course, we fan these fires of change. And although our spirits can be in a state of curiosity, we also need to control ourselves. We need to guide ourselves. We need to work together with other powers, which have this understanding of humanity, of the role and balance of humanity, and we need to restore that balance of humanity. Another shifting balance is that of the qualities or the caste system. So there are roughly five castes. You have the Pauria caste, the people who have no skill. Then you have the, the Sudra, the people who have a skill and therefore also uh, more of a typical uh, function how to contribute to society. Uh, then you have the social caste, who are good at you know, the social dealings, um, the warrior caste or the leader caste, who tend to have a very strong uh, capability for self-sacrifice and uh, a strong moral compass. And then you have the artist, uh, scientist caste, more in developing new knowledge and um, or in a way seeking to, to guide humanity forward by materializing the higher impulses. So if we look at the history of humanity, um, it started out with being led by the Brahmana caste because the person who had an idea or a concept or a vision of how things could be better was usually seen or respected as the leader so the people with the impulses from the higher worlds were also guiding humanity. Well, eventually we learned how to uh, create a surplus of, uh, of food, which allowed us to yeah, uh, de develop other trades rather than just hunter or farmer. And we started to develop a warrior caste. Well, this warrior caste eventually took over control from the priest caste. Uh, then of course they yeah, created great nations, they worked with, with power, with different cultures, experimented with it, uh, but they also cooperated still with, uh, yeah, with the artists because they themselves could yeah, in a way manifest power, hold power, but they could not really innovate very well. So they used the innovators uh, the priest caste, religious caste, artist caste, to create these innovations within their society. And because of the structure of society, which was still inspired by higher forms, humanity could progress very quickly, very rapidly, because good conditions were made for humans to develop themselves on all levels. So that era has passed and we're now in the time that we're being controlled by the, the social caste. It is now about being popular, being accepted, um, saying the right thing which the rest of the people want to hear, making people feel good, making people trust you, making people have hope. Um, one of the problems of this caste ruling uh, is that they don't have the same stability. So society itself tends to become a lot less stable, just swinging back and forth a lot because there are no guiding principles being applied by the current leadership. And um, the other um, yeah, problem besides the, the, yeah, the social fluidity is the lack of morality. They're not people who are, in a way, self-sacrificing or thinking of the greater good. Uh, they're people who are very sensitive to social pressures and very sensitive to status. And they tend to do whatever is necessary to improve their status. So instead of being led by uh, people who are noble, 
um, we are now being led by people who are in a way um, social and the problem is very much the transition because leadership used to be about conflict like the strongest would lead or the person who had the strongest position who was most right would lead and now we're shifting to another caste which is more social and in yeah focused on cooperation on working together a more of a merchant caste but there's still a lot of fighting going on and they're not very good at fighting and because they're it is not their nature to fight they get very confused in being social they get very fearful they get very stressed and they tend to resort to typical stress survival patterns such as deception lying um, hiding things from each other uh, so yeah there's a lack of openness a lack of distrust people are hoarding power and they're basically dysfunctional people dysfunctional members of their caste you could say or in positions of leadership so the question is why is this happening why is in, in a way lower castes gaining leadership well it's not how it is supposed to go but it is how it is going so ideally from this period of being led by uh, yeah, the artists um, this impulse of the artist of the, the priesthood should have percolated down into the rest of humanity so the next layer of leadership should have been in a way priest kings or priestess queens a group of leaders who have the strength of a leader who have the morality but also the the wisdom the insight the blessings of the higher powers the inspiration of the higher powers so they can lead their nation forward and these qualities of the priest kings should have descended and been absorbed by the social caste so that they're not only priest kings but also pe people who have a lot of empathy a lot of understanding uh, a lot of compassion with all parts of yeah, their their domain of their kingdom so that they can rule with with wisdom with morality but also with compassion so this was kind of like the envisioned system of human progression uh, unfortunately it's not working out this way because humans are not very good at incorporating these higher qualities um, in themselves so you could say like we've had long periods where these things could have been learned should have been learned but yeah people were not paying attention in class have not really worked on their personal development enough have not integrated all these lessons and qualities in themselves um, yeah so now we're failing our exams because and failing our exams is basically screwing up the world so if you look at the current state of the world and yeah how it is going it's not that good it's quite unbalanced so to the question what needs to be done to help the world well it's not so much that we need to continue praying to higher powers come down here and save us because they have given us all the tools but we've not worked with them we are not selecting our leaders in the correct way we are not having our ideals even in the correct way we worship people who are famous who are rich not person people who are well developed who are in a way the homo universalis who is the yeah and we're showing us how to develop ourselves into more complete humans um, so we're not applying the right type of guidance for us as a human race we should try to elevate uh, the people who do have the correct balance or can at least attain the 
correct balance or help the rest of the world attain this balance. Uh, they should be in positions of influence, but we're not putting them in positions of influence. Because we're not seeing things from this perspective, we're seeing things from the perspective of our instinct. And repeating our past life traumas as a spirit. And until we can rise above our instinct and above the patterns which we are just continuing life after life after life, we cannot master ourselves. How can we master our environment? This is the problem. Because we can't really control our environment in a good way and that we are mismanaging our environment is just a reflection of our mismanagement of ourselves. So, yeah, the sad news is there's really, really a lot to do for humanity to fix ourselves, to fix our world. And we have been given all the support and tools which are needed, so now we should simply use them. And this is why I'm making this video and why I'm, in a way, incarnated in the current time. But I'm not being very successful, unfortunately, but who knows, miracles may happen. Thank you for